Welcome. My name is Penelope Chatterton. Welcome to Awaken the Dream. My friends, first of all, I want to thank Tim Riley, who's looking very cold today. It's bitter out here, and I'm adjusting to the valley. And I realize Cape Air is like 20 degrees warmer, so I'm adjusting, but trying to keep my spirits high. So thank you, Tim, for your usual wonderful steady work. And also Ellery curran Muri, who is my web designer. I, I seldom mentioned her, but she does a great job. Uh, on taking the shows from Tim and uploading them however she does it and then putting them on Facebook and YouTube, blah, blah, blah. So thank you, Ellery and Tim. Good team. Today, my friends, I'm sort of starting a new chapter. Not only have I moved out here four months ago and I'm still adjusting, but I sort of have gone through almost all the books of Joel. So my good friend, Diane Doheny, sent me a big box of CDs of Joel's lectures. So I looked through them and I just grabbed one that said on the outside, good. And I thought, okay, it's called The Still Small Voice, which you've heard me speak of often. So I'm going to do my best without a million notes. I was getting calluses on my right hand from doing all those books. And I thought, well, this is easier. However, it's kind of not because you feel so responsible to Joel's way of giving the information where I'm not looking at the printed word, I'm hearing him speak. So he is resonating through my home and he has been for months. It's interesting. He's really a teacher a powerful teacher. He speaks very clearly and with a lot of passion and know-how, and I've never heard him stumble. So let's get started with this 1958 class in New York City in a theater with his Infinite Way students. He opens it up by saying, I had an experience several years ago that shook me so badly that I was worried about my class ever coming back if they really understood what I had received from spirit. And it was a revelation. And he explains revelations are shocks to the system. He said, I churned inside. I was upset. I mean, he said, I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I was scared. So I went and got some proof. I run to the Bible. My best friend, Jesus Christ, whom I do sincerely believe is the most powerful teacher that ever walked this earth. He was Joel's friend. And Joel looked at, at the Bible and it says, first of all, taking thought. What Joel received was thought is not power. Now, in the 30s, where he was thriving, way back then, thought was ruling the roost in this country and all over the world. People thought that's all we have to do is think, and that's what happens. We create with our minds. Well, when Joel received thought is not power, he had to go to the Bible where Jesus said, do not take thought. Do not take thought. You, could turn, you cannot turn a white hair black. You cannot improve yourself one cubit. He uses that word. I'm not even sure what that word means, but I like it. He said, you can't do anything with your mind to add to yourself. So again, Joel had to quietly go home and pray, and he did. He prayed for days. Nothing upset him more, and he even cites the example of the world thinking it was square. By years ago, when somebody said, but it's round, I'm going to sail around it. All those folks who dared to say something brand new, like a revelation like that, to prove people were wrong, they all went to jail, which I thought was interesting. I didn't know that. So revelation shock really upsets people because they have beliefs that they hang on to, that they feel has made their life work. And when that shot out of the water, you've got to go somewhere else. And where else do we go? Well, he went to that class the next day, two years before this, and he thought his students would come in all upset about this offering he gave about thought, thought not being power. They came in smiling and happy and said, gee, that was a great lecture yesterday. So he thought, oh my God, they didn't get it. They did not get what he was saying, which is interesting because it is so powerfully different and it does threaten our concepts. So he proceeded to explain to this class exactly what had happened. And when he cited the world being square and being proved to be round and people ending up in jail because their, their beliefs were challenged, he could understand why this class didn't get it. So he goes on to talk about the Bible again. Take no thought for what 
you are looking at. Do not take thought. Another message was God is not thought. Now, there's another one that shocked him because he figured, who can go wrong if God is thought? We've got it made. How can this possibly be? Well, the message came through. God is not power. God is not thought. God is the still small voice. So that's where Joel had to go. He had to let go of this dimension and go to the fourth one, which is all about God being spirit, God being one with us, God being the whole world. God made the earth and it was perfect. Everything was good. And it's been good ever since generations ago. What we are aware of is still there. He talks about bananas. Now, who can say bananas started anywhere and they're going to ever end or apple trees? Who's going to be able to say that? No one is. Planets carry on, seas carry on, tides carry on. We're aware of creation. That's what we can do with our mind. We can be an avenue of awareness only. So where does this take us, of course, to the still small voice? And you're not going to find it if you're not quiet if you do not be still and know I am God. So as usual, Joel is going for this transcendental power. The Bhagavad Gita in India knew this. Mystics knew this. Everybody in the world knew about this transcendental power. Authors, writers, truth seekers, mystics, Meister Eckhart, you name the mystics, Brother Lawrence. The truth of life has been there forever for us to find and to enjoy and, ac and accept. And the masses have not accepted it. And I'll explain that. Why have the masses not accepted the fact that thought is not power? First of all, in this dimension and in the 30s, when Joel was very alive and kicking and, and realizing thought was power, that's what's glued to everybody in this dimension. You know, add to yourself. See what you can do to build a better kingdom for yourself. How can your ego thrive? That is this dimension. How much money are you making? Um, what is important to you is appearances. That's illusory. That is not what's real. The only thing that's real is the God that abides within you, talking to you morning, noon, and night, if you will listen. And that is hard for this, for this world, for human beings in the third, let's call it the third um, uh, generation. They, they have trouble moving into a spirit world and thinking that that is what's really good. So yes, God is our abiding place. He created the earth. Everything's been here and there was no beginning to that. He says, if you want to test time, ask yourself if two and two makes four. It's always been two and two, and you didn't create that. Joel says to his class, I didn't create you being here. You showed up. I didn't, with my mind, say, I want you here, and I'm looking at you. I did not do that. Joel was a receiver of messages, and that's what the Infinite Way is all about. It's Infinite Way students enjoy the fourth dimension, and they need to be two and three gathered together. And here's a wonderful message from the still small voice. He's talked to unity people and Christian scientists, and he's talked to New Age folks and the Church of Religious Science. <clears throat> he has had many, many groups that he has come to share the Infinite Way message. And all he's asking of all of these groups is don't set up any barriers. There shouldn't be any because we all have one father. We all have the brotherhood and sisterhood of all humanity. And all of these faiths, these metaphysical faiths, know this. So he says, don't compete with each other. Join each other. Support each other. And be a message for two and three gathered together. Now, this is an interesting point in my life in that I've just moved here. Finding two and three gathered together since I've started, Joel, has been a chore because I don't know why there are so few of us. There's so many millions who love it, who, who, who have websites about it, which um, Tim brings up for you to see. But somehow or other, and I have a new friend in um, New Jersey who is also an infinite way gentleman, and he is also finding, gee, where can I find somebody to talk to? Where can I find those two and three? 
Now, I know in the Infinite Way world, there are study groups where people show up and they sit and they listen to tapes and they meditate. And that's what they do. And that's very, a very beautiful thing. So then again, we have spiritual healing. Now, we have Mesmer, we have Mary Baker Eddy, we have spiritual healing that's thriving in this world. A lot of folks don't understand it. It's not in every church yet. Joel thinks it will be. Not in our lifetime. He's very, very honest about this. He thinks it might be in half the churches in our lifetime. It's in metaphysical churches. He hopes it will get into Catholic churches and Protestant churches and all churches. But that's where he's saying we all have an individual assignment to go deep within ourselves in quiet and find out what our expression can be for sharing that beautiful, whole, perfect love that is within us that never, ever, ever leaves us. So that's our source. We go within. We say, listen, here I am. I'm standing on holy ground. What are we going to do? What am I going to be guided with today? One beautiful thing I love that Joel says, if you think that voice is yours, you're mistaken. And I thought that was kind of interesting. Now you can, you know, have this mind that is a, a place for your awareness to go. You have a mind that will, will entertain the still small voice, which is a purpose for the mind. The mind is a beautiful thing. It's an instrument. We've been given this mind. We're not to sort of not listen to it. We're supposed to enjoy it and honor it and know it's a good thing. Now, let's get to this, how do we have peace? In 19, oh, May 2nd, 1958, we had the United Nations join with all countries about, let's put away our guns and our bombs, our hydrogen bombs, our atomic bombs, let's have peace. That was the most powerful meeting in this world. And it was a mind Thing. They all got together, they shook hands, the enemies, they were not going to have enemies, we're not going to try and get each other. Well, I think we all know how that went down. Not well. Those promises were broken, and those promises came from the mind, the, the mind of control, of wanting power. So that was a very amazing example to Joel that if that doesn't wake us up to what doesn't work, then what does work? Well, the still, the still small voice, which can be quite a mystery. And I say that because getting used to the fact that you're being guided, it's taken me some time to really appreciate the fact that, gee, that really wasn't something I thought up. Um, it's such a mystery. It's so amazing. It's, it's like walking on water. And you have companionship. You have companionship. You have your, your needs are met. You have abundance. You have love in your life. You have everything you need. And Joel always says, don't go to God with words. Words, he's not in this dimension. He's not in the material world. He doesn't hear your words, which is why Joel says a lot of prayers just are not answered. Because God is not in the material mortal world. He does not hear your language. What he hears is the prayers of your heart which means your vulnerability. You go deep within yourself and find that love within you and share, share how you feel. It's, it's something that works for me. Every time I go there, it's like some, the, the, the Red Sea opens up and I, have, I get prayers answered. And they come not from what I'm thinking up here, like asking for something for me. That'll always fall short, never gonna work. But go into the depths of your being and praise God and say, how can I find my two and three gathered together to uplift consciousness? Because that's what I am here for. We all need the two and three gathered together, which is why I said I've just moved here and I've got to, I mean, as much as I have wonderful responses on my website and wonderful Infinite Way friends, I still would love to sit with people and just meditate and be quiet. So anyway, I'm adjusting. I think when you move, it takes a while and I'm all, as I say, it's uh, chilly out here, but very doable. My car started, so I'm, I'm celebrating. So back to Mary Baker Eddy and spiritual healing. Now, that shocked a lot of people, and Joel is the first one to admit he has seen 
spiritual healing work. Now, I have to laugh at, at this was 60 years ago when Joel mentions an aspirin for five cents and then uh, getting a reading from a, maybe a practitioner for two dollars. I mean, that just goes to show where, what, where he was. But his point was they both may have the same result. You can take an aspirin for a headache or go to a spiritual healer and have the same result. But guess what? The, the problem with that is you do not develop your soul powers. So for you to get in touch with spirit, the aspirin will not do it. But going deep within you and feeling the presence and acknowledging and feeling, <clears throat> excuse me, your wholeness, your completeness, that's a challenge in this dimension when we have been brainwashed so much. And Joel will be the first to say, <clears throat> we have been very brainwashed. So I think it's challenging being here. And I think this is why I find the Infinite Way material so incredibly exciting because it gives us hope. Even though uh, Joel says thousands can, can drop at your right and 10,000s to your left, that you can't do anything about. Not now, he says. But we have to just notice that and say, okay, that does not have to come to my dwelling place. There is protection with the Infinite Way fourth dimension. Nothing can come. Germs can't come. Disease can't come. Accidents can't come. Storms can't come to your dwelling place if you are aware of the still small voice of your protection of the presence within you. Everything is about the presence. So yes, I can see where I've had to really work hard to understand. I've had to study hard because, you know, our lives are always so filled with stuff stuff to do and we're so busy but I think I'm at a, at a chapter in my life where I have a little more privacy and quiet and a chance to hear the still small voice so I feel very privileged so Joel thinks spiritual healing will be in every church in this world and the mystics that he talks about the Bhagavad Gita the it all of this knowledge has been with us forever and, and the masses, uh, I, I think it's so interesting and it's helpful for me to understand when a lot of my friends laugh at what I do or tease me and say, well, that, that was interesting, but not for me. And that's fine. We have to accept where everyone is because that's perfect for them. Wherever everybody is, that's fine. And he was saying that about barriers, even between the metaphysical churches. We have to break those down. We have to get together. We have to support each other. We have to build these groups of consciousness, of feeling the presence in a group, all of us together. That raises consciousness. So I'm taking that to heart. And spiritual healing will be around. I know that there are people that are get slain in the spirit uh, in, the, in the Catholic Church that understands the power of two and three gathered together healing. It's, it's, it's coming. And as he says, five cents for an aspirin or two dollars for a healing, let those soul powers work. You can do that on your own. You can do it with others, but go within. So going within is the name of the game. Find your private time. Now, he, he tries to get his class to calm down. He said, now I'm going to give you an example. Let's have you all relax your bodies. Let's not that, let that be an issue to bother you while I run you through a little exercise. So everybody's breathing deeply and relaxing. And he does say you could stand on your head and you can still hear the still small voice. But he said, we're in a class now. I just want you all to relax. And I want you to think about, and I've mentioned this in other uh, shows, that the worst person you know or a condition of your body, something in your family that upsets you, that gnaws at you. I want you, you all must have something that you would like to, what does he say, give a crazy nickel for? He said, there's got to be something going on within. It's a concept that you have. Now think what it is. Is it a person that you know? Is it a disease that you have? What is gnawing at you? And Joel is challenging them all to think about this. And then he's challenging them also to say, you are malpracticing. You are sinning. But let's say I'm holding a, a person in bondage to something negative. That's not about that person. That's about me in my judgment. That person is a child of God and is perfect, even though I might see him and make up a story that it doesn't look like that. 
So that was interesting. He's talking about the fatherhood of the whole universe, the brotherhood of man, and that our brothers are God. And that's powerful. And he said, you cannot destroy reality. Reality is living forever. There's no beginning and there's no ending to the love in, within you and the reality of all of us. So he said, I challenge you to release that story. Nothingize it. Let it go because guess what? It's hurting you. And that makes sense. It's gnawing at you. It talks to you. It bothers you. So for you to have some peace, surrender it. Understand what it's about. It's a story about something in your experience that's negative that you have not healed. Let it go. Let this person go. Let the condition go. Rest in that inner peace and let, let it dissolve. And this is why things cannot come to your dwelling place if you practice this meditation. So I kind of like that because things certainly gnaw at all of us. And I was thinking to myself, yes, I have some examples and I've been working on letting that go by seeing the wholeness of, of the universe. Every soul is one soul. We're all one spirit. We're all in brotherhood. We're all connected by spirit. We all have the still small voice. We all have each other and we're in this together. So lift each other up. See your brother and sister whole and complete. Let the story go. It can't hurt them. They don't know what you're thinking, but it can hurt you because, you know, it's interesting when we judge, judge not that you'd be judged, is that we're really drawing on any experience we've had in this dimension. You know, we're, we're pulling on something we've, we've seen or experienced. So it's all ours. So that makes it almost simple to say, well, it doesn't have to be mine anymore. I can let it go. So if you need to ask the Holy Spirit, your guide, your God within, to help you with that, that's a very good thing to do. If you have trouble with it, ask for help on that. Ask for a new vision. Ask for that peace that's been guaranteed. Well, my friends, the still small voice. Again, I am listening to CDs now. I'm trying to do this differently, and it's more challenging on many levels, but it's easier on my right hand from all that writing that I was doing. And I'm keeping my sense of humor as I recognize where I am in my journey and where I have to go. I have work to do like we all do. But when you see the end in sight, so to speak, when you see the reality of your whole life and that it really, at right this minute, the now has everything. We are living in the now. There are lots of books written on the now. Now everything is in place. There's no past, there's no future. Everything is in place right this second. Everything is here. All the love you want, all the abundance you want, everything that you want is in this now. So Joel again, in the infinite way, infinite way students have to get this, he says. They have to be in that fourth dimension. Be in the now. Enjoy everything that's there. It's already there. There's nothing else that can be added. You can't get anything else. It's all perfect. Interesting. It's all there. My friends, I want to thank you so much. I'm ch cutting it a little short today because I don't want to cough. But I want to thank you for joining me on Awaken the Dream. And thank Joel, thank Tim, thank Ellery, thank Diane for all the help and support I receive. We'll talk to you again soon.